as we're looking at different components of our business, that determines how far out we're looking. If we're looking at consumer trends, that's a much more near in because we're trying to deliver products that they themselves are going to create a pull for. Okay, So you're in a relatively shorter time period, one year, two year, three year out. If we're looking at technologies that might disrupt and transform our business, whether it's in agriculture, as you know, uh, looking at the technology in agro may be a 10-year horizon before that technology really changes. The way we do farming, the way we support our farmers who grow our potatoes from an irrigation point of view, for example, all of that is a multi-year initiative. We're going to come up with a new cultivar of fruit. The trees will not bear fruit for five to 10 years. So there you're really looking much more longer term and, and further out beyond because new technologies and material science, our knowledge may actually be projecting several uh, you know, years, decades out sometimes. So it depends on the problem we're looking at. I think other industries outside food and beverage have a long track record of trying to look at because they've had to live as industries with longer term projections. If you think about the pharmaceutical industry, it takes 10 years to develop a product. Compare that to our industry, where we're talking about a 12, 24 month, right? So other industries have been looking at that. In the heavy engineering industries, sometimes two, three decades out before you can actually see commercialization. So for us, it's a looking at it from, again, two perspectives. One is making sure we're looking broad and diverse, uh, not only in our own industry. I think very important is to look for solutions that might already exist in other industries being applied to different problems. Okay, uh, An example of that is the use of computational modeling. Uh, not used much in our industry. We brought that into PepsiCo as a skill set, built a team around it and said, you know, if we were to use computational modeling on our processing technology, on our engineering of foods, how would you now apply that tool to be able to unlock solutions that don't exist. And we've had great success in re-looking at a food processing line and saying, let's model that. Instead of building one, let's model the process. And those are tools that start to open up. And they, in turn, give us avenues into other industries. Similarly with uh, ingredients, we may see the applications outside. Uh, simple example, we're looking at materials that are used to coat um, wind turbines to stop them from getting dirty. Why not apply that material to food processing lines so they don't get dirty, which means microbiological risk goes down, which means servicing time goes down, right? So these are examples of looking at that. Another is talking to experts that are looking at trends of technologies. The key to me, though, is not any one technology, it's convergence of these technologies. Often, a technology is not going to completely disrupt, but when multiple technologies seem to converse at a place, you're going to find that convergence starts to paint a picture that says this is what the future is likely to be. That requires experts with a broad background. And probably the final statement on that is make sure you have enough people in your own organization that have the diversity of thinking diversity of background to be able to recognize these patterns. That's the strongest tool I can give is the actual people and scientists that you have on your team.